All right, guys, we just got the uh, Schumacher SC1564 battery charger in. And we're going to talk about this. I'm going to uh, kind of show you what I know about this charger and some of the things that's unique about it. Um, first, we'll just go, quickly go over it. It's a portable battery charger, as you're going to see whenever we take it out of the box. Got a handle, carrying handle, so you can carry it around. Um, it does claim to be a 100 amp engine start mode charger meaning that if your battery is dead uh, won't start your vehicle you put it in engine start mode and it, it gives up to 100 amps of uh, current so that you can start your engine now what's unique about this particular battery charger is of course it does standard lead acid batteries AGM deep cycle batteries but look at that it also does lithium ion batteries now as far as I know there's no cars coming with lithium-ion batteries except for electric cars and hybrids and they don't operate on 12 volts so this charger is not going to work with those cars but there are aftermarket batteries that are replacement batteries for cars and trucks that are 12 volt batteries or close enough to 12 volt they're actually 12.8 volt batteries that work with regular automobiles and what's unique about them is they're lighter and they pack more punch or more starting amps than a regular lead acid battery but like I said they are aftermarket so you could actually buy one of those lithium ion batteries put them in your truck or car and you'd be able to charge it with this particular battery charger with no problem now down here, this is the SC1565. It is a 6-volt or 12-volt charger. It auto-detects what the voltage is. 100-amp um, engine start, 30-amp boost, and a 2-6-amp a to six amp, uh, maintain or trickle charger. It is a desulfur, desul, It will desulfate uh, a battery that's sulfated it is supposed to detect automatically whether the battery is sulfated and if it is it will automatically go into the desulfation mode and uh, the, the manual says it can take up to eight to ten hours to do a to, to in order to desulfate a battery so it does have that feature it also has an alternator uh, test feature and we'll go over that uh, and let's see, I guess that's about all there is on the front. Of course, this is a Schumacher. They've been around since 47. Uh, they are a, a, a quality company. They, they've been making battery chargers for years. This particular battery charger is made in Mexico, not China. Um, supposed to be fully automatic. Like a lot of fully automatic battery chargers, if the battery voltage is too low... You cannot force this to charge the battery. Uh, it just won't. It, it won't let it happen. The, the battery voltages have got to be up to a certain level before it will actually uh, charge a battery. I'm not 100% sure what that level is, uh, but just just know that that if you hook this battery charger and many others that's got automatic feature to a battery and the battery charger does not want to charge it, you need to check what the voltage is of the battery now this does do a check of the voltage and we're going to see that now i don't have a car battery available uh but we do have two 12 volt lead acid batteries here one showing uh let's see here about 10 volts these have been sitting for a couple years so i'm going to be curious to see if we have any luck so this battery here on the the right showing about 12 point six twelve point one six volt volts this one showed about ten point one five both of them are discharged this one on the left is more so than this one so we're going to uh get ready to take this out of the box and uh get after it now i do want to show you this before we go any farther so this is a troubleshooting, an error code. There's error codes that will pop up on the display. And I just want to read these uh, off. For one, in case we actually get one of those error codes on one of these two batteries. But also, so you will know what the error codes 
or if you have a charger like this and you're getting one of these and you don't happen to have the manual so if you get a F01 the battery voltage is still under 10 volts or 5 volts for a 6 volt battery after 2 hours of charging uh, resolution the battery could be bad have it checked or replaced SUL the charger has detected a sulfated battery the charger will go into a desulfation mo mode if the desulfation is not successful after 10 hours the charger will go into abort mode F02 the charger cannot desulfate the battery the battery could not be desulfated have it checked or replaced F03 the battery was unable to reach the full charge voltage uh, may be caused by trying to charge the battery or bank of batteries uh, on too low of a current setting try again with a higher current setting or have the battery uh, checked or replaced F04 the connections to the battery are reversed the battery is connected backwards uh, unplug the charger and we're going to check that I'm going to actually hook this up backwards and we're going to see uh, what kind of indication we get unplug the charger and reverse the connections to the battery F05 the charger was unable to keep the battery fully charged in maintain mode the battery won't hold a charge may be caused by drain on the battery or the battery could be bad make sure that there are loads on the bat make sure there are no loads on the battery if there are remove them if there are none have the battery checked or replaced F06 the charger detected that the battery may be getting too hot thermal runaway the charger automatically shuts shuts the current off if it detects the battery may be getting too hot have the battery checked or replaced now I don't have any idea how it would know if the battery is getting too hot it does not have any kind of a thermistor or thermometer or anything for it to know whether that battery is getting hot so I don't know about that one F07 the charger uh, the charger shut off because it its internal temperature exceeds limit Make sure the charger does not have the side ventilation holes blocked. Move the charger out of the sun and into the shade. F08, the battery voltage dropped too low during the maintain mode. May be caused by a drain on the battery or the battery could be bad. Make sure that there are no loads on the battery. If there are, remove them. If there are none, have the battery checked or replaced. Okay, so there's the codes. Just in case you get it up on your display. So now let's go ahead and yank this thing out of the uh, box. I have not had this out of the box yet. So we're going to see what all we get. does have uh, your little fingers to, to wrap the cords up with which is nice my other I've got an old school Schumacher battery charger um, that I've used forever it's not a smart it's just a, I guess you'd call it a dumb battery charger it's always worked but I've wanted a more modern uh, charger that is a little bit more reliable Now it does have a fan. I can see a fan right here, which has got to be good. Don't keep it cool. Got some nice, uh, at least I think they're nice, battery clamps. Let's give you a close up of the. display here it's got a nice display um, six six to two amp 30 amp 100 amp then it's got a little symbol right there I'm not sure what that symbol is standard AGM lithium and then uh, the little frowny face there looks like uh, that would be bad battery so let's go ahead and plug it in to start with and let's see what we get
and you're not supposed to plug you're supposed to connect it to the battery first but it'll be all right i just want to see what it gets without it being connected to a battery so just i guess by default it's at 30 amp it's going to display voltage which obviously is zero volts um battery type we're going to go to standard because that's what kind of batteries these are these are let, just your typical lead acid batteries now the first thing i want to do is hook them up backwards so i'm going to hook and we're going to go with this lower voltage battery i'm going to hook this one uh I'm, yeah that'll work uh and then we're going to hook this one up right yeah Let's see if that does anything. Nothing. I'm going to go ahead and hit start. Okay, automatically shut off. So it's not going to even try. So let's go ahead and hook it up right. This is a battery that I don't really care about. Now, see, now it's showing a voltage. Now, remember, we measured about 10. Uh, 10.1 now it says after 30 seconds if you don't hit the start button it'll automatically start charging if the voltage is high enough I don't know I think it did say 10 volts didn't it so we'll wait about 30 seconds and we're going to see if uh, if it does indeed start the auto charge and there it goes it says on it's charging at a 12 volt rate it's charging at 30 amps right now it does say that it when it initially starts the charge it does start at 30 amps and then as it gets uh closer to capacity it'll drop down to uh the six or two amp rate cannot hardly hear it running i can hear a very slight hum might be the fan running my old battery charger you definitely heard the uh um uh, the hum of the transformer there's 100 amp 6 to 2 amp and we'll go ahead and go back to 30 amp so that definitely looks like that's working so yeah if it with the terminals reversed it would not it wouldn't even come on now let's go ahead and kick it over here on this uh, this battery that's at 12 volts just to see and right here it automatically shut off those that were not hooked up to a battery 12.1 volts 12.2 now we're just going to wait and we're going to see if it will automatically kick on remember uh, should this light here should come on saying that the battery charger is on and charging the battery 30 seconds if you don't hit the start button it automatically kicks on and starts charging and there it goes it's on it's charging right now with it charging it's charging at 12 volts and as it gets uh, higher to the voltage it should quit at which should be around 12.8 or so um, I'm assuming that that would go to you know a little higher than 12 12.1 12 12.3 12 12.5 and then 12.6 or 12.8 is what I would assume it would uh, kick off at now it does automatically go into maintain mode once the battery gets fully charged it drops down like I said earlier to the 2 or 6 amp rate and it will actually cycle that you can keep this hooked up indefinitely to a battery and it will cycle uh, the charge rate to maintain that battery if it does detect a sulfated battery it will automatically go into desulfation mode and uh, that's a frequency deal it, it actually adjusts the frequency going into the battery that breaks up that desulfation uh, that's a cube or that not the desulfation but the sulfation that has accumulated on the plates of the battery and it breaks that up and and it gets rid of it and then uh, extends the life of your battery 
Now, as far as the uh, alternator test feature, what it tells you to do is, and I'm just going to read it to you just so that there's no, uh, you know, so I don't deviate. It's a pretty basic alternator test feature. It's not really an alternator test feature. Any multimeter will do this, and that's all this is doing is acting as a multimeter. So what it says is uh, with the charger unplugged, uh, connect the charger uh, to the battery, plug the charger in, start the vehicle, rev the engine up to about 2,000 RPM for, for 30 seconds, and turn on the vehicle's headlights and, uh, or other accessories. So what you're doing is you're loading up the alternator. And what you want to see is a voltage at least 13.4 volts or higher. Shouldn't be over about 14.6. And if you see that with accessories on, and like I say, your headlights, your AC, uh, put your fan on high, you know, your blower uh, for your AC on high, any other accessories, turn them on. And with the engine at about 2,000 RPM, it should be between 13.4 uh, and 14.6 if your alternator is able to to uh, supply, uh, you know, that much uh, current and, and at the proper voltage. If it's not, you need to have your uh, alternator checked. If it drops down, uh, in fact, before you even suspect a bad battery, you need to do that. Once you get your car running, make sure before you say the battery is bad make sure it's not the alternator not charging the battery i've seen a lot of people just go ahead and assume oh, my battery's dead so it must be bad so they put a new battery in it only for it to last about a day and then it strands them because what the problem was the whole time was their alternator wasn't charging the battery so you need to check the alternator make sure it will maintain uh, the proper voltage and enough current to charge a dead battery up Anyway, uh, I don't know what else to say. It's just a typical uh, battery charger that's got a nice feature set. Uh, looks like it's working great. Uh, let me see. It'll, it actually will come up here and say bad. If it does detect that a battery is unable to be charged and it senses there's something wrong with the battery, it, it pops up here and says bad. So let, it lets you know that you have a bad battery. If it cannot get the battery up to uh, the proper level, it'll, it'll tell you the, that your battery is bad. And like I say, it's got a float mode, which is the maintain mode. Uh, and it is for 6 and 12 volt batteries. Uh, it does say if you're using the engine start feature, which is the 100 amp right here, make sure you've got a battery installed in the car and that the cables from the battery charger are hooked to the battery. Don't don't think you can hook these cables just straight up to the battery cables without a battery installed in the vehicle and expect this to start the car. Because you're, what you're doing is you're running the risk. All right, guys, I'm sorry. I ran the battery down and I had to spend about 30 minutes charging the battery back up. Um, but So I left off explaining do not try to jump start your car without having a battery installed in the car don't don't hook the cables up to just the battery cables of the car and try to crank your car because this does not put out a clean dc signal it's more of a square wave and it's enough to where you could damage electrical electrical components in the car by doing that the battery acts as a as a shock absorber uh, in effect and smooths out the dc uh, voltage so you don't damage uh, electrical items so make sure you got a battery installed if you hook this up and you go to the 100 amp actually any of the voltages but especially the 100 amp and you're going to try to crank the car make sure battery is hooked up now while I was in there charging the uh, the GoPro battery up I had the charger hooked up to this right hand battery which I think we started off at roughly about 12.2 uh, volts uh, in, in 30 minutes, it's fully charged the battery. It's showing 100%. And so that battery is good. We're going to go ahead and switch over to this battery here on the left-hand side. And it's showing about 10 volts. 
Uh, and if you see right here where it says V, that's that is for volts. But it's also got a percent sign. That percent, once it's charged enough of the battery, uh, I'll go ahead and manually hit on to get it started. But once it's charged enough of the battery, this percent, it will tell you what it is uh, determined the battery percent is at. So if it's at 75% charged, this will say 75 and the percent will be lit up. Uh, if it's at 90%, it'll say 90% and the percent will be lit up. So uh, that's another good feature. Once it's on the charger long enough, you can take a quick look at it and you know kind of determine uh, what percent it's it's at. Now, obviously, these batteries don't take a long time to charge. They're they're relatively small compared to a car battery. The bigger the car battery, you know, the higher the capacity, the uh, longer it'll take for any battery charger to charge it. But uh, just be aware that you'll have voltage to start with and then it'll switch over to the percent as it charges the battery and gets a kind of gets a feel for how uh, how much charge is, is left in the battery it's going to charge for a few minutes before it's able to ter to uh, determine that anyway that's about all I've got fully automatic I could manually go right now down to the lower current if I wanted to just go ahead and walk off right now and know that I manually put it on the 2 or 6 amp range but if I well, if I don't do that and I just keep it on it will automatically drop down to the uh, 6 or 2 amp range depending on what it feels it needs anyway that's it uh, again this was uh, model number uh, hold on let me find it SC1564 and just so you know I don't know if you can see that, but made in Mexico, which in my opinion is better than made in China. Anyway, sorry this took so long, but I wanted to give a nice, uh, thorough review of this battery charger in case you're looking for one. So far, I think this is going to be a, a great, you know what, I'm going to show you the battery charger I've been using for, uh, uh, I don't know, a couple of decades. Stand by. Now this is what I have been using. The uh, needle right here stuck, so it doesn't really move much. You can tap on it and get it to move. But this is a 75 amp, 12 amp, and 2 amp. All it's got here is conventional low maintenance, conventional free deep cycle and uh, two 12 and 75 amp modes all manual just got a big transformer in it and uh, it's got a uh, I think three diodes and if I remember right that's about it I had to replace one of the diodes because one of them went bad so I was able to order a diode uh, off the internet and replace it and I got this back up and going but you can kind of see the difference I'll still keep this one just as a backup since this is old school and doesn't have any uh, computer controller you know control built into it I'm sure this one's going to be as far as uh, longevity wise less prone to you know to quitting on me this right here has got a basically a little miniature computer in it it's computer controlled more possibility for something to go wrong so if this one ever quits me I at least still have this one that I can uh, rely on but I'm telling you right now that this is a very nice battery charger I'm very happy with this thing so far especially since it does have the uh, cord management uh, little ears sticking out this one doesn't so it's it's very cumbersome anyway okay just real quick I just want this was the battery that we fully charged the battery charger uh, said it was complete we're just going to see what the voltage is that it decided was good then it's showing 12.65 so that's a perfect voltage for a uh, 12 volt battery 
And these are years old. Um, this is a Duracell Ultra 12 volt, 12 ampere hour AGM battery. It is, uh, I don't know, I've had these sitting on the shelf for quite a while. So to be able to get it charged up uh, is a relief. And this charger does have a six foot uh, cable to uh, run up to your battery. So you can have this sitting on the ground and have plenty of uh, cable to, to make it to the battery of the car. In most cars, uh, six foot, they are pretty heavy, heavy gauge. Uh, I don't know what that is, six or eight gauge probably. So, uh, yeah, I think that I think that'll do it. Anyway, you guys take care.